All right, guys. Uh, so we'll continue with our learning in research methods as well as our statistics. But today, I want us to focus on a whole new part, really. We want to look at one statistical test that you would encounter a number of times. This is one of the univariate tests that you would want to use and this test is referred to as the chi-square test. The chi-square test. Or the Pearson's chi-square test. When do you use the chi-square test? And what does it read? So, you use the chi-square test if you want to determine whether there is an association between two categorical variables. When you're using the chi-square, you need to know that your outcome variable has to be dichotomous or binary. It should be a yes or no kind of outcome. While the exposure variable should also be categorical or it may even be ordinal based on the situation. So, the chi-square test is one of the common tests that is used in statistics and you must know that this being a invariant test, it is just testing an association between one variable, which is the exposure and a particular outcome. It is one exposure, one outcome. It does not factor in the effect of other things such as effect modifiers, such as confounders, but it is a very important test because it is going to tell you whether there is an association between one variable and another, both of which would need to be categorical, particularly the outcome variable being dichotomous. Now, to do this today, I would want to use a sample question so that we can effectively relate with the chi-square test itself. So, I want to give you one example of when you can use a chi-square, and then I will give you another one which you should go ahead and solve. So, let's say you are thinking of a situation where you want to relate having hypertension and coffee drinking or smoking. Let's say you have a question such as is there an association between smoking and hypertension? That kind of a question, this kind of a question can be answered using a chi-square when you make smoking a categorical variable and hypertension a dichotomous variable. So what you need to think of now is from this one what is my exposure and what is my outcome variable? Simply say, what is my independent and what is my dependent variable? So in this one, which is an independent variable? Smoking. So this, smoking is your independent variable. And let's say we are saying smoking yes or no right and then the dependent variable is definitely going to be hypertension right yes or no this would be one simple case in which you can use a chi-square test to determine whether there is an association between smoking and hypertension this being your dependent, this being your independent variable. Is there an association? So you would hear the chi-square test being referred to as a test of no association. 
It's a test of no association in that it has a null hypothesis which states that there is no association. So the null hypothesis which you are now know is actually going to state that there is no association between smoking and hypertension. This is what your now hypothesis will sound like. And the alternative would be auto automatic from the now hypothesis. It will say that there is, is an association. An association. There. That's what your alternative hypothesis is going to state. But you and I well know that when we're carrying out research, we test the null hypothesis because the null hypothesis is the one which has the definite answer. Is that okay? Yes. Now, the chi-square test is the test you can use to test this association. Is that okay? Yes. There would be a number of research where you could encounter something like this. It could have been another variable here, maybe sex. Is there an association between the sex of the patient and a certain other outcome here? Let's say hypertension or kidney disease. Is there an association between treatment that the patient takes and a certain other outcome which is binary? Is there an association between one thing and another, all of them, the exposure being categorical and the outcome being particularly dichotomous? You can use the chi-square to test that association. Now, before we delve into the actual process of citing an example of this, I would want us to probably think about when can you use the chi-square test. You can use the chi-square test like all the time you do it when you're using a statistical test by ensuring that the hypothesis, the assumptions rather, the assumptions by ensuring that the assumptions of this particular test are met. That's the time that you can use the chi-square. If the assumptions are not met, they are violated at some point, you are likely to make a wrong or to make wrong inferences. So some of the important assumptions of the chi-square would include the fact that one, what you are going to be observing are going to be frequencies, not necessarily the cells. So you actually observe the number of smokers and then you're comparing to the number of non-smokers and things like that. These are going to be frequencies, not percents. That's the first thing. The second thing is that at least 80% of the observations of the frequencies, 80% of the frequencies should all be above five, okay? So, among us, the smokers, for example, in each of those four cells, which we are going to draw in a contingency table as we start showing this, you should have at least five or more. It should basically be more than five, to be safe. They should be greater than five in 80%. This just means that 80% in a contingency table, if this is your contingency table, where you have smokers being your exposure and hypertension being your outcome, it's actually telling you that in here, 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 80% of these, of these uh, squares should all have a value greater than 5. This is just telling you that all of them should have values greater than 5. That's the only time it's going to be 80%, right? 25%, 25%. So if you if you say it's only three, this means it's going to be 75. So 
means that all of them should have observation is greater than 5. Which means in here, the value that should be there should be at least a 6 or more. You know what I mean? Same thing there and there and there. This is one of the most important assumptions that has to be made. The other assumption is that the sampling of the participants into the study should be random and independent. So the sampling should be independent, which means that you cannot actually have a situation where you are sampling in a manner that is actually removing the independence in the whole process of sampling. It should be independent sampling and it should also be random. Those assumptions become very important. The other one is that the distribution should actually follow the chi-square distribution. And if you look at that table that I have given you, it will show you that it is showing the chi-square table, which means that we are going to use the chi distribution table in order for us to make our conclusions. So those assumptions become very crucial for the chi-square test. Therefore, let me give you an example of a question which would require us to use the chi-square and then you and I are going to run through the process of calculating and we'll probably use one of your <coughs> calculators to do this. Did you come with calculators? Okay, great. So I want us to go through and see how one, we make the contingency table itself, given equation. So that you are able to make your own contingency tables given particular question. So I should be able to show this question, but I believe we all have the sample question, don't we? Yeah. Alright, so are there people that don't have the sample question? Okay. Alright, so here we are. So we have a sample question here which would require us to use the chi-square and today it's very interesting that we are going to make the chi-square manually, alright? So that you see what happens behind your, your softwares such as your stator and then later on when we try to do this we will actually also be able to